Okay, what I'm working on today is a belt, but not like a regular normal belt. Uh, this is what I've heard called a mechanics belt. Uh, really useful for people that don't want uh, an obvious outer buckle on a leather belt. And in the case of a mechanic, that's so that they don't scratch what they're working on when they lean against it with a buckle. But some other people might not want that buckle for various reasons, mostly for comfort or because they're bothered by metals. Uh, and it uses this little plate that has a hook on it is what actually catches the belt. That's going to function as our buckle and it's going to be attached onto the back side of it to where it's not visible from the front, from the outside. And all that's really exposed is the little hook. So that'll be just hooked in the other piece of leather. It'll just be this little tiny piece of metal. And this is stainless steel so it shouldn't react with anybody. Um, and it should hold up for a good long time. My only complaint about these, I got these from Springfield Leather, uh, is that the hole in them is actually a little small for a rivet. Uh, so I'll wind up drilling that hole out, and I may even drill another hole in it just to have a second rivet in place. Uh, but it's not necessary. I've been wearing one for years myself uh, with just the one hole riveted. But what we have here is an inch and a half wide strap of leather. Uh, it's got something odd going on right here. You can kind of see a little weird bump in the leather. That feels like a hard spot. So I'm probably going to work around that because that's probably some sort of tanning flaw or insect bite in the leather. And just for the sake of exploration, let's see, cut through that. And I think it's just a scar in the leather. But either way, best avoided on a project. Scratch all the current A wall. our one end. This is going to be the end that actually has the uh, clip attached to the back of it. But that's going to be attached into a lining piece which is made out of about four ounce veg tan leather. This is stuff I have left over from cutting lace so it's already dyed brown. Um, whereas the outer piece is a piece of veg tan that's about mm, five to six ounce. This can make a pretty good hefty belt by the time I get both layers together. Um, and then I'll just be measuring basically the belt size that I need will be about a half inch from the end is where this clip is going to wind up. So I need to add a half inch on there. Then the belt size will be to the center sizing hole. And that's the size that measured that you'll need. Uh, this is actually being made for my sister. So I'm not going to actually put numbers out there because nobody likes their belt size being given out on YouTube. But I'll measure it up and then I'll use that center hole to figure out where my other holes need to be. Alright, so down on the other end of the strap, this is going to be where our center hole is going to go. And you can use a template. Um, like this for your sizing holes. Um, this is used for regular belts and gives you an idea of what you need past it. It's usually about four inches or so past the last hole. So I usually actually, instead of using this template, I just measure with my fingers. Uh, and how I do that is as I'm punching the holes. So it's easiest to punch the holes if you look down the strap to get the holes lined up in the center. If you hold it sideways in front of you, it can be hard to tell if you're in the center of the strap or not. And anyway, I'm just going to lay down 
my index finger and that first knuckle and use that and I'll wind up getting holes approximately an inch apart. It's pretty close, it's not quite exact, but really, really close. So, And that would be my center hole. I want to do two holes this way. And two holes this way. And then I'll lay my palm down. And again, the widest part of my palm there is just about right for what's going to be past the end of the belt. And I'm going to use this template for a strap end point, an English strap end point. I think it's the actual term. So that's how I, I lay out belt straps. Um, you don't really need anything specific to do the job. So now that I've got the main parts of it marked, cut, and so on and so forth, um, next I'll be laying out where I want to do any stamping on it. First step in all that is I'm going to take a stitching groover. I'm going to put my stitch line all the way around. Since I'm lining this belt, it's going to have stitches all the way around its edge. got it wet down. I'm going to go in just inside those stitch lines with another line. And that's going to mark my tooling uh, border. Kind of arbitrary what distance you want it to be. Alright, now next is I'm going to be putting my sister's nickname on here, which is Spud. And it needs to be centered in the back of the belt and of course you want it to be right side up uh, so most belts that means the buckle end in your left hand to your left side and then it'll lay down out in front of you that'll be right side up um, now the center point that you're looking for which I've got a really faint mark right here is actually the center point between where the buckle tongue is going to be or in this case the hook of the buckle and the center sizing hole that we used as our measurement. So you'll measure that measurement, you cut it in half and you measure between those. So it's actually not going to be the very center of the strap which is actually more over here because we got more added on the end of this belt than on that end. So that's always something to be aware of. If you just put it right in the center of the strap it's going to be off center in the center of the back. And now they do make and I do own several uh, sets of letter stamps that make this really quick and easy. Um, I don't have them here. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I normally do, uh, and that is just use a craft aid template and carve them in to 
starting at that center mark, I found that it's usually it's easiest to start from that and work out. It might help to write down what you're going to be putting on, but since Spud is such a short name, it should be pretty easy for me to line these up. And the raised bridges on the craft aid just make a mark in the leather when you rub over it with a tool. So you don't want to push down too hard anywhere else. But it leaves enough of a mark to be able to see what's going on. I'm also going to put a little bit of a line around here, and that'll make more sense later. Um, cause that's me marking off where I'm going to do a border. We're going water, so let's go ahead and wet it down some more again. And I also want to lay out on this side. An area just a couple inches in front of that smallest sizing hole. We'll put an arc there as well. Just gonna let this sit just a few minutes because I just wet it down again. And I know that it's a little too wet on the surface, so I'm gonna let it soak in. And then it'll actually tool better. Right now. All right, now that that's had a chance to, I wouldn't say dry out, I'd say more that the water is down in the lower layers rather than right here on the surface. It feels a little drier on top, but that's what I want for tooling. So obviously, just taking some stamps, slapping them down there and hitting them a few times is way faster than carving it in like this. But especially if you're going to do something like push the background down, which you can do around stamps too. You could take and cut the lines of the stamp and background around them as well. Uh, but it just looks completely different if you go ahead and um, carve it in rather than just stamp them in. But that's not the main reason I did it. I did it because, like I said, I don't actually have the stamps here at my shop. They are over at my parents' and my sister's houses at the moment. Okay, the rest of the belt is going to have a honeycomb pattern because, you know, we're into bees. So. And that's just going to basically fill in from line to line. And I'm going to assume that I'm going to be stamping around it with some uh, border tools as well. So I don't need to get right to the lines. Something along. This sort of setup. along that line. Now there is a stamp that um, is professionally made that does a honeycomb type impression. I don't like the impression quite as well, uh, which is why I made one of my own out of a bolt. But um, that one will do basically these seven impressions all in one hit. And it could probably do this very quickly, doing seven and lining up and right on down the line back and forth. 
But like I said, I've got this one instead because I like the impression it makes a little bit better because I think it looks more like real honeycomb. Um, but there is a better tool if you want to do this quicker. But there's just going to be a lot of that. And then I'll go along with a border tool. And just cover the edges basically. And like that. So, this is going to be more time, but I'll jump you all forward to when I've got that done. All right, now that I've got it stamped all the way, I'm going to go ahead and take and just knock off all the edges with an edge beveler all the way around. All right, and the lining piece is already dyed, but the front piece still needs to be. Okay, let's go ahead and throw some finish on the spud belt here. I'm using Resoline, which is one of my favorite finishes. Um, it's probably not the best for belts. It's kind of a little squeaky on them uh, But in this case, I don't think it'll matter much. It does lock the dye in really well though and It's a pretty good waterproof finish I've gotten some holes drilled in this. I drilled out the one a little bit larger drilled another one That's a challenge all by itself because um, this is a stainless steel and it's pretty hard to drill through. I think this is even a hardened stainless steel. So uh, good quality cobalt bits uh, will sometimes drill through, but I actually had to even heat this a little bit to soften it up some, and uh, then I could drill through that. I was very careful not to heat it up enough to damage the temper in this section up here, and especially in this little hook. Um, just a little bit there. Not even to glowing or anything like that. Just went through some temper colors and got it soft enough to be able to drill through it. But anyway, placing this in the belt, it actually goes into the liner and rivets into the liner. So you won't see any rivets or anything out here on the front. Which means I have to get the liner placed exactly right on the belt. Otherwise, this is going to be wonky or weird. Uh, so to do that, since I cut my lining leather larger... I don't have to try and get exact on most of it, but I need to be exact on it right up here at the end. So I'm going to do something I normally don't do and use an ink pen to mark the end of the leather there. So I've got a spot where I know where everything's going to be. About a half inch down from the end and pretty much evened up inside the belt, centered up. Make a few little marks and punch some holes. So, some rivets, probably just.
using those marks I just made, we're going to glue the liner to the belt and then it's time to stitch it up. One of the really tricky parts about gluing up a belt like this is keeping it from sticking where you don't want it to so you can get everything lined up straight. And the trick for that is to go into the kitchen and get some wax paper and put some of that on the part you don't want it to stick to. So that'll give you some time to play with it basically. And a spot that isn't going to stick. And we're just going to line up our pen marks I made there earlier. And then we can work our way down the belt from there. And when we get to the wax paper, we just peel it out of our way. Well, and as far as sewing on any belt goes, it's pretty simple. There's just a lot of it. Uh, I do have to watch out for my clip on the back here and how it's going to fit through. So I want it to be on the outside rather than trying to be through here because then the clip's going to be in the way as it feeds through the machine uh, like this. But here it'll fit through just fine. Trimming the lining and finishing some edges up. Punch some holes down on the sizing holes and we should be ready to go on this belt. Alright, let's go ahead and get these edges finished up. usual on belts and straps rather than getting the little edge slicker and running all the way around it. I just use canvas straps. Okay, and last step is to get the sizing holes punched through the liner. And that's just as simple as dropping it in there and hitting it. belt just hooks onto them like that. Any excess of the belt tucks under. So you basically just wrap it around, tuck it under itself, and pop it into the sizing hole that works for you. And this side will be kept in place by the belt and of course um, usually that first belt loop after the buckle on most belts. <laughs> 